This lesson deals with the step response of an RC circuit. You can find these notes in the course ebook in chapter 5, starting on page 14. Suppose we have a circuit that has a switch in it that's linear, and at time t equals t0, this switch changes state. If it was open, it then closes at t equals t0, or if it was closed, it opens at t equals t0. What I'm left with is a linear circuit that I could create a Norton equivalent of. So suppose I put across these terminals a capacitor, and that I know the initial condition, the value at time t equals t0. I'll later show you how to find this, but assume we have that. Let's solve for the voltage V of t. The current that enters the node equals the current that leaves the node. The current in here is going to be the voltage V of t divided by R thevenin, plus the current in the capacitor, which is C dV dt. Now let's pull out the C. I'm left just with dV dt. Out of this term, there's no C, so I'll put a C in the denominator. So when I multiply this out, I get V of t divided by R thevenin. Let's divide this C on the other side of the equation. I've got I Norton over C. Let's bring this term on the other side of the equation. I get a negative V of t divided by R thevenin C. What I'm left with then on the other side of the equation is that the derivative of V of t dt. Let's further do some factoring. Let's pull out an R thevenin times C with a minus sign. Just have V of t. Here's I sub Norton. I have a C, but I don't have an R thevenin, so I gotta put an R thevenin in, so when I multiply this out, the R thevenins will cancel, and I'll get I Norton over C, and the minus and the minus will become a plus sign. Let's divide both sides of the equation by this term. One over V of T minus I Norton R thevenin, times the derivative of V of T, and that's gonna be equal to this term right here, which is minus one over R thevenin times C. I've got V of T and DV of T on one side of the equation, I now can solve for V of T. Let's integrate both sides of the equation, dt, say from some time t0 to t1. Again, t0 is when our switch changes state. The dt's cancel, and I have dv of t over v of t minus i Norton times r thevenin. And then I've got a constant here. I'm going to pull it out in front because it's not a function of time. So I get a minus 1 over r thevenin c, the integral of 1 dt. On calculus, we took expressions and found their integral. You could do that here if you wish, but I'm just going to go look this up in a math handbook and found that the integral of dx over x plus k is the natural log of x plus k, where k is a constant. In my problem, v of t is x, and my constant is a minus i Norton r thevenin. Solving this integral, I have that it's the natural log of the denominator, v of t minus i Norton r thevenin, evaluated from the lower limit to the upper limit. The right-hand side of the equation, the integral of 1 dt is just t, evaluated at t1 minus t0. Let's evaluate this left-hand side, put in t1 for t and t0 for t. So I got the difference of those two. I may recall from algebra that if you take the ratio of two quantities and take their natural log, that's the same as taking the natural log of their difference. So I'm going to take these two terms that are subtracted and write that as the natural log of the first term divided by the second term, equal to the right-hand side of the equation. I want to get rid of this natural log, so let me raise both sides of the equation as the exponent of e, where e is 2.718. e raised to the natural log is just the argument itself, and I've got this term over here. Let's cross multiply, bring this term over here. We've got v of t1, bring this on the other side of the equation, then I've got this times this, and that's my solution for v of t at a time t equals t1. We could just change the variable here and just make t1t. v of t is equal to i Norton times r thevenin, v of t0, minus I Norton of thevenin times the quantity E to the minus T minus T zero divided by R thevenin C. And I'm going to use another symbol for that. I'm going to call it tau. And this is the form of the solution of a first order differential equation. This term here, I Norton times R thevenin is just a constant. So I'll call that just in general, A1. This is another constant. I'll call it B1. I could write this equation in a shorthand notation where A1 is I Norton R thevenin and B1 is V of T0, the initial condition of the capacitor voltage, minus I Norton times R thevenin. Now we get some observations about this equation and about this equation. It's on the next page, but let me do it on the equation here and let you look at the next page. Let's evaluate this equation at T equals T0. I have E to the minus quantity T0 minus T0, which is equal to E to the 0, but E to the 0 is just equal to 1. Well, then I've got this term plus this term minus this term. I'm just getting that V of t, when t is equal to t0, is V of t0. That's not too surprising, but that's just a check on the equation. That's going to be our initial condition. Also, in this equation over here, if you let t equals t0, we again get e to the minus 0, and that's just equal to 1. We just have a1 plus b1, and that has to equal the initial condition of V of t0. 
And what happens as t approaches infinity? Well, this becomes a very large number, but we have e to the minus. That's the same as saying it's one over e to the plus this quantity. If t is getting larger and larger. This term is gonna get smaller and smaller because we're dividing by a big number. In the limit, this is gonna be approaching zero times this quantity. So all we're left with then is I Norton times R Thevenin. Now, what is that? Well, let's go back to the first page of this video. What that's saying is T approaches infinity. The current I Norton goes into these two terms, but we're seeing that V of T is just equal to I Norton times R Thevenin. It implies that this current is equal to zero. If we wait long enough, this capacitor looks like an open circuit and all the current flows into here. That's consistent. We said previously that the current in a capacitor if you have a constant voltage, it looks like an open circuit because I is equal to C dV dt. The voltage isn't changing, then the derivative is equal to zero. Let's also look at this equation when T approaches infinity. This becomes a very, very small number. Basically, it multiplies B1 by zero. As T approaches infinity, V of T approaches A1, and that was equal to I Norton times R Thevenin. Now, these observations are on the next page. I'll take a look at that. Taking a look at t equals t0 and t approaches infinity from the two forms of the equation that we had. We can draw some conclusions from what we observed. We don't need to find the Norton equivalent circuit to find the voltage across the capacitance. We can just analyze the circuit as is. What we do need to know is what's the initial condition, the voltage across the capacitance. Now we know the voltage across the capacitance cannot jump instantaneously. Whatever value it had at t equals t0 minus, it must also be the value at t equals t0 plus. We also need to know the voltage across the capacitance as T approaches infinity, which is treating the capacitance like an open circuit. And then we have this term tau, which is R Thevenin times C. And R Thevenin is the resistance seen looking back into the circuit with all the independent sources set equal to zero. And in a Norton equivalent circuit, that is the same as the Thevenin resistance. We can summarize that with this equation then V of T is equal to A1 plus B1 times E to the minus quantity T minus T0 divided by tau, where A1 plus B1 is equal to V of T0 a is equal to V of T as T approaches infinity, and tau is equal to R Thevenin times C, where this is the Thevenin resistance seen by the terminals of the capacitance. Suppose you want to solve for some other voltage or current in our original circuit that we had modeled as a Norton equivalent. Because the circuit's linear, that means that any voltage or any current in our circuit is some scalar times the capacitance voltage. I'll call that scalar K1. In other words, any voltage or any current in my circuit is related to A1 plus B1 times e to the minus quantity T minus T0 divided by tau by some scalar. I'll call again that K1. This is just a number. So the product of these two is just another number. So I'll call that A2 and I'll call this B2. This is the general form of a first order differential equation due to the fact that we have one element that has a derivative relationship. The value of A2 and B2 we can find the same way by setting T equal T0 and then find our variable at that particular instant in time, and that's just gonna be A2 plus B2, because this is gonna be e to the zero, which is one. The voltage and current of some elements can change instantaneously. It's only the voltage across the capacitance that can't. We're gonna use it as a boundary condition to find other voltages and currents and see what they are if that can't jump instantaneously. And then likewise, we'll find the value of A2 by letting T approach infinity, which multiplies this by zero, or divides by a big number. We'll find the value of any voltage or any current when we treat the capacitor like an open circuit. Then lastly, we'll find this product of R Thevenin times C. Let's summarize this as an algorithm. The step response of a circuit containing independent sources, but only one capacitance. Resistances and control sources is gonna be of the form F of T equal to A plus B times E to the minus quantity T minus T zero divided by tau. Where F of T is any voltage or any current in your circuit, Tau is R Thevenin times C, where R Thevenin is the Thevenin resistance seen at the terminals of C, which is setting all the independent source equal to zero and then looking back. If you have just resistors, you can use series and parallel combinations in most cases, or if it's controlled sources, apply a test voltage, measure a test current. The value of A in this equation is as T approaches infinity, this term drops out. We just have the value of A, and that would be our voltage or current that we can solve for by treating the capacitor like an open circuit. The value of B we can find from the initial condition because F of T zero is equal to A plus B times E to the zero or just A plus B. So B is gonna be equal to F of T zero minus A. And this is the step response of an RC circuit.